How's it going? Uh, this is uh, James P. White from 95.7 Cruise FM, The Locker Room. Welcome to the Jedi Jimmy podcast. This is episode number 32. I actually am dealing with and or uh, episode number six, and it's titled The Eye. Actually, The Eye, which is the asteroid event that does take place on Aldani, and there's a lot of significance to that in this episode. So it starts out with the leadership, uh, the Empire leadership on Aldani, talk a lot about how easy it is to uh, manipulate the people there by giving them, uh, you offer them stuff, they say no. But if you just randomly drop stuff in their way, they they, uh, fall for it. So they do a lot of manipulation uh, that the Empire does. So they give them food, they give them shelter, they give them, uh, when they're, like, especially for the uh, pilgrims that are on their way to see the Eye, which is a huge event on Aldani. It's a very spiritual event for the uh, people there. But they also introduce Commandant Bahaz, uh, he's very self-centered. He's a controlling leader of the base, but he cares more about pleasing the empire and the upper management than he does uh, his uh, uh, the troopers that work under him or even his family. Uh, impressing the empire is very big in his world. Now, Tamron, uh, he's one of the uh, the team that's working with Andor. He actually used to be a stormtrooper. And Cinta, who was introduced uh, also in previous episodes, it took a lot of trust between the two of them to grow because her family were actually slaughtered by the stormtroopers years and years ago when she was a teenager or even early teen. So during this episode, the Eldani uh, pilgrims, they actually go to the, uh, the valley specifically to watch the meteor shower. They call the meteor shower the eye, and it happens about three uh, every three years. Now, Andor... And uh, all the men are supposed to be troopers from Alkanzi. If you don't know where Alkanzi is, it's actually the air base on Aldani. Now, Val and uh, Cinta, actually, they have a separate part of the mission. And they rappel down, like, it's almost like a dam. It's a flat wall, but they do it on the backside. But it's on a repelling cable. If you remember, uh, I believe it's GoldenEye from uh, James Bond. Uh, They do the same thing in a very similar way. Now, uh, in the... uh, Now, this whole episode is basically dealing with the heist, where they're trying to steal the payroll uh, from... Aldani and it's huge amount of credits and in the escape uh, Nemec who was introduced in previous he's the brains of the operation he has this cool scanner that helps him navigate through a number of different things I'm actually going to explain how that scanner is very important in their escape because it actually helps them through the asteroid field when they're escaping from during the heist. Now, the thing is, is when they are doing the escape with the scanner that he has rigged, they're actually able to uh, navigate themselves through this, uh, the eye, and they were able to make it through, but the, the TIE fighters all got destroyed. Now, when Nemec is hurt, they go to see 
They call him Dr. Quadpaw. He is a... Uh, he has four arms. He's very similar to the character that we're introduced to in, I believe it's the Solo movie, because he has four paws, but the guy in the Solo movie is a lot shorter. This guy is huge. They could be similar races. But Nemec's last words he said was to Andor or Cassian Andor, he said, climb. And it was a very subtle, uh, I don't know, a reference a clue to Rogue One, because he said, climb. And if you remember Rogue One at all, K2SO, when he was killed by the uh, stormtroopers in Rogue One, he pointed up at the data bank where the, the information was that they needed, and said, climb. So both on their deathbed said, climb. So that's a very big reference. Now, after the, the heist and they're escaping, Skeen actually uh, tries to betray the rebels when they are going to the doctor to help um, Nemec, who inevitably dies. And he says, how about we escape together and we split the payroll and leave the rest of them out of it? And, all, and uh, Cassian did not want to leave the rest of them, so... They argued for a little bit, and then Andor just shot him dead. Sucks to be skiing. Now, after that, uh, he tries to buy access to a different shuttle where he's going to take his designated payment for the, uh, for the uh, mission and just leave. He wasn't betraying them, but he just wanted out. But then Fel gives him the uh, Nemex Manifesto because Nemex said, you know, give it to uh, Cassian. And that's a deep moment. So then we skip a little bit further in, uh, into the episode. The next thing we see is Mon Mothma giving a speech at the Imperial Senate in which uh, looks exactly like the Republic Senate in uh, episode four, which is actually a really cool clip. Now, a lot of the team die in this episode. So, uh, Tarmarin, who used to be a, a stormtrooper, he dies. Nemec dies. Skeen dies because Andor shoots him. Uh, Andor... Uh, so, again, I said Andor that tells Vel that she's do he's done. But we also know or assume that uh, Cinta is still alive and also Lieutenant Gorn, who was their infiltrator in the base, he ends up being shot by a stormtrooper. So there's a lot of... This is a very dark episode because just like Rogue One, basically, everyone dies. Now, my favorite quote from this episode was Vel said and it was very intense and precise I kind of liked it he says she says there's one path one choice either we win or everyone dies very dark this is a very dark episode 
Now I'm going to go through my previous predictions as I've done every episode. Mon Mothma, one of the leaders of the Rebel Alliance, will ap- appear, and I was correct, and that was during episodes one, two, and three. Now, my prediction from episode four was we could see Landian, or sorry, Lando Calrissian, or a younger version of Han, or Chewbacca, because this is uh, five years after Solo, a Star Wars story. I'm hoping we see uh, Cassian, uh, sorry, Agent Callus. That was, again, a prediction from episode four. And I said the attack on the base was going to happen at episode five, but it ended up in episode six. Now, I still, in episode five, I said a Jedi will show up in the series. And I said one of the possibles could be Galen Merrick, Codename Starkiller. That hasn't happened yet, but there's a huge, there's been a huge tease seeing Starkiller's helmet. That could st- uh, still be to come. Now, my favorite quote uh, from uh, the previous episode was The axe forgets, but the tree always remembers. No. Now, my uh, favorite prediction from episode six is Andor, even though he was trying to leave the group, he will stay with them. And I also feel during this series, the Ghost, which is a very influential ship during uh, Rebels, will show up either to back them up. So with Harrison Dula... uh, piloting that will be involved maybe not this season but next season for sure i am so excited i loved this show it was very dark it kind of really fell into suit as with uh, rebels or sorry with uh, rogue one so excited to see what's going to happen. We're only halfway through, man. Halfway. There's more to come. I will see you next episode when I talk about episode number seven. Oh, I'm excited, man. Okay, I do need to thank my sponsors. First of all, I do need to throw a huge shout out to uh, Dean Blondell and Dean Blondell Network which uh, is where my podcast is found. As well, I I do need to thank my buddy Army Chris, who sets this up for me, and his Fire for Effect Productions. I think I said that right. I look forward to seeing you next week. May the Force be with you. Always.